Well, welcome to this week on Lake Erie Port of Call. I'm your host, Mike Jamison, uh, taking you to beautiful destinations and uh, teaching you a little bit about boating here each and every week on CW13, 8, 8 o'clock at night. And uh, sitting on my uh, good friend Tim's boat right now, and we're going to be talking to him a little bit about, you know, breaking props. And, uh, you know, the water levels have been low, and uh, we've had to work on making sure that uh, we keep our boats in great shape. And uh, he's going to be talking about the props. And we're also going to be talking about how to properly uh, tie up your boat to make sure that, uh, you know, with all the heavy winds and things we've had, uh, make sure you don't have any problems with your boat. And uh, should be a great show. We'll also kind of go through the things you want to do before you take your boat out. And Tim's going to, I'm just going to kind of hand the microphone over to Tim and he's going to uh, show you all the good things. We're here at Harrison Marina, our home base for uh, Lake Erie Port of Call. And uh, Brenner 75 is uh, helping bring you this show each and every week. And, uh, you know, as, as we get a little bit more into summer, we're going to start showcasing great places throughout the uh, Lake Erie uh, Western Basin. And uh, we're really excited about that. So uh, if you have a, a boating business and you'd like to, uh, you know, maybe be a part of what we're doing, you can give us a call, 419-514-1302. And uh, we want everybody to know just how great it is to get out, enjoy boating, and enjoy just this fabulous area that we have in northwestern Ohio and southeastern Michigan and uh, beautiful beautiful stuff so hopefully you learned something today and uh, next few weeks we're going to be talking to the Coast Guard uh, we're also going to be uh, heading up to some of the great locations that you might not have known about and just how easy it is number one to purchase a boat number two we're going to go through some great inspections so you know exactly what you're getting because there's a lot of great boats out there for sale right now and number three how to be safe on a boat and so you and your family can uh, enjoy the great water so hope you enjoy the show Once again, welcome to Lake Erie Port of Call. And uh, uh, it's been 20 years since I've been in boats. Tim sells here. Uh, of course, he's been part of boating his whole life. And uh, Tim's been with us and will be with us here. We're uh, uh, Brenner uh, Harrison, Brenner 75 in Harrison Marina. Yeah, you got some names there. I got to get used to those names. I'm going to be saying that a lot, you know. And uh, we're sitting on your boat right now. Absolutely a gorgeous Silverton. And uh, Silverton's one of those boats that you kind of wish for when you're in your, when you're in your 20s, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, and I'm going to probably throw a picture up here. Uh, uh, Tim also has a little Donzi boat that it's, I call it the death trap. <laughs> And uh, Tim took me on a ride on it a couple of years ago, and I apologize every time I see you. I actually broke his seat on this beautiful little Donzi, but uh, I think, you know, we were, we were well over 60 miles an hour that day, and uh, I just got to, you know, I still have back problems from that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> no, but, yeah, you guys have a lot of th great things going on, and we're going to be talking about props and little things here, but... It was such a beautiful sunny day. I mean, if you got a boating show, you got to be on the boats here. And I, I wanted, I'm just going to actually throw it over to you. And uh, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, how to tie your boat up to make sure that, uh, you know, all these winds and everything. I mean, everybody was so scared last week. They said all these straight line winds coming in. There is a correct way and an incorrect way to, uh, to uh, tie your boat up and make sure that's all done. And then, go through, you know, the steps of, uh, you know, getting your boat started, you know, and get it going because a lot of novice people get out there and uh, don't know there's a few things you want to do before you just fire that boat up. I'm going to work, I'm going to make you work today. Mm, good. <laughs> I haven't worked all week. Oh yeah, right, right, right. Uh, you, you picked this thing up for a, a, a steal, didn't you? Yeah, I got a good deal. And those deals are out there. Oh yeah. I, I think a lot of people, you know, get worried, uh, you know, a big boat is what, 32, 34? 31. 31. Uh, basically, you guys can sleep on it and bring the whole family down here and uh, do a lot of nice stuff with that. But uh, I, I think people that are maybe afraid to get into this type of boat. I, I, I mean, is it, it's very easy to maneuver and drive, right? Oh, yeah, once you get the hang of it. I mean, the the... Believe it or not, the bigger the boat, usually the easier they are to handle. Uh -huh. um, smaller boats are, are pretty easy, but 
but when you get into the bigger, the two motors, the reverse rotation of the props, so you can spin it and, and maneuver it just about anywhere you want. Now, now uh, a boat like this, you know, if you go on Craigslist, I know you guys have a lot of boats for sale, used boats, new boats, and, and things like that. What, you know, what are some of the things you want to look for uh, from the standpoint of, gosh, I've never bought a boat before. I mean, can you buy too big if, you know, you're... It, really, you know, buying a boat, you have to, you have to buy to your needs. Right. Um, if it's just uh, you and your wife, you and your girlfriend, you know, you can go with an 18, and it depends on where you want to use it. If you want to use Inland Lake or out in Lake Erie, um, there's so many factors in what you want. Um, I, like I said, I, I've owned a little 18-footer for years and years and years. It was a, a four-person boat. Um, now it's a three-person boat. <laughs> no, that's fixed. I know you fixed it. Um, but my wife and I, you know, we like to entertain and whatnot, and we just couldn't do that. So right. we look for something bigger. I come across this, and and uh, it was a steel, but there was a lot of lot of elbow grease, and right. we you know we redid basically the whole boat. Well, I, I um, noticed your teak is perfect on this boat, and that that's a that's a sure sign of somebody that really you know cares for their boat because this is like your baby. Yep, that's okay. like your. I you have know. a I have got a lot of hours in tinkering with this and that, and there was some major stuff. I wouldn't say major, but. Uh, I mean, the boat sat uh, for years, and it just needed a complete overall. Nothing hard, but just a lot of labor of love, I guess you'd call it. Well, we're hoping next week we'll have uh, Captain Tony and his inspection service on. And uh, I'm looking at a beautiful uh, 34 Grand Sport over here, and uh, maybe go through a little bit of an inspection with that and, uh, you know, showcase the things. One thing before I let you go, and I actually turn the show over to Tim for a while here, uh, I've never done that. I've never done that. You must be a Me close either. friend. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. uh, uh, Before we do that, uh, the one thing I, I, I do want to ask about, uh, you know, outdrives compared to a uh, boat like this, this has actual direct drives and you gotta have your props. Uh, that's kind of a better thing. Usually the bigger boats have direct drive. Uh, the bigger boats do have stern drives. They're a little tougher to maneuver. Right. Um, but with the bigger boats, you usually have the, the straight shaft out the bottom. Um, is one better than the other? Uh, you just not, want to get them in the, get them in the water. Yeah, I, I, yeah, obviously you can't, you, you can have a direct drive on a smaller boat, but if usually it's smaller boats, it's inland lakes or. Those are like uh, ski boats. Now, yeah. Right? Um, you can't tilt a, you know, if you want a beach, you really, you can, but, you know, you run the risk of ripping it up, r ripping it up, and with, with a stern drive, you can tilt it up and, and go into shallower water than you could with, with an end board. Well, this guy's going to take my show over here and, and just show you some common sense things to make sure that uh, you, you, know, you get your boat tied up right and, you know, get your boat rolling. I'm going to run the camera today because, you know, we're low budget here. You know, my I don't have the robotic cameras yet. Well, I got the drone, but uh, but we're uh, I'm going to let you do that and uh, a lot more great stuff right here on Lake Erie port -a call you ever drive around the neighborhoods just to look at the houses? I like spotting the ones that have been around the lawns because they remind me of the amazing legacy I'm part of. Hi, I'm Marty Sutter, president of Genoa Bank. For over 110 years, our bank has helped families buy and build their homes. And all that time, one thing hasn't changed. At Genoa Bank, we believe that when we put the mortgage needs first, the rest takes care of itself. Genoa Bank, taking your banking needs personally. Sound system from TAS Electronics, you've just got to move. TAS Electronics, it's hot. Stop struggling with the big box stores. Choose Gladio. Gladio Home Center. A hardware store gets so much more. Your home improvement answer store. A place to design your interior space. A professional and friendly smiling face. Everything you need for your home. Gladio is locally owned. You'll be glad to know. Gladio, Gladio Home Center. 
Uh, folks, we're here with Tim Sells right over here at uh, Brenner Harrison's. What is Brenner 75, right? Brenner 75 at Harrison's. Yes, yeah, see, I'm a little dyslexic there, a little bit. That's probably from all the years down at Brenner when you guys were down at uh, behind the sports arena. I still get confused. Yeah, yeah. You and, uh, yeah, I haven't seen him in a little while, Alan Adolph, I'm sure he watches this. You know, when I had my boat back then, you guys used to mess with me, and I lived on my boat. And you take the biggest boat you could find and pick, take the horn and put it right over where you knew I was sleeping. You did it all the time to me. And then just lay into them horns at about 7.30 in the morning. And uh, that was like my wake up call. And you know, it's just one of the fun things about boating. You know, I, uh, I, I have to get back in. You know, I miss you guys. I miss being a part of it. I'm glad we're able to put this kind of show together because as it evolves, God only knows, they'll get to see the real Tim Sells. And your beautiful wife, and you know Sean and Bubba, and all all the great people, but uh, you know the water's down right now, and we got a lot of these sitting here, these chunked up props, and uh, I know, uh, and the reason I wanted to do this is people that maybe just get a boat, because young boaters that are just really getting into it, those are the ones that maybe they just don't see things, or they're running at full speed at night, and there's logs everywhere. And what basically does somebody have to do, and how do you know if you've damaged a prop other than popping it up? You know, I mean, a lot of vibration and stuff like that. Yeah, usually you hear it, right. the thud, um, and then you'll get a shake, like in the steering wheel or the windshield. Mm -hmm. um, and usually when you feel a vibration, you know you've got a, an ear bent or a chunk taken out. Right. Um, and then you really need to take care of it as soon as possible because that just leads to more damage. Because what basically it's doing is that, you know, the bearings, all the rods, whatever that's in there, it's vibrating too, yep. which means it's getting right back into your engine or at least the outdrive. Yeah, prop shafts, seals, and, and yeah, all that kind of stuff. It, all, it will all, over time, destroy them and, and then have major issues. And, and basically, I mean, this is going to probably happen to you at least once a year, probably. Yeah, if you, if you do a lot of boating, <laughs> right. springtime, you know, we have all the, the runoff, um, yeah. everything comes down the river. Um, usually midsummer, it's okay, but after heavy rains, you get that. And then as the water fluctuates around here, uh, high water, low water, uh, going over the, sh you know, out of rivers, sh you know. Exactly. Um, yeah, you, if, you're, if you're a boater, you've, <laughs> you've messed up a prop. Now, this type of, this is more of a, a basic prop setup that would be on a boat. I mean, I know there's stainless steel. We don't have a stainless yeah, steel that, on here. Yeah, that's basically just a standard aluminum prop on a Merc Cruiser stern drive. Basically, what are they going to do then? Are they going to fix this, or do you, at this point, just hand off to a new one? Well, d depending on how bad it is, like this one is fixable. What they do is they, we take them down to Erie Prop. Okay. Um, uh, they'll, they'll weld on it and then shape it and then they have blocks and they fit it and then they balance it and most of the time when they're done with it you can't even tell you can't even tell now i a lot of people tell me you know my old boat that i had was a 26 footer and there was a i, I was getting a lot more uh performance out of my boat when i went to the stainless steel props mm -hmm. obviously a lot more expensive yep and, and a lot more damage when you hit so when you break one of them you're 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 in trouble yeah usually if you if you and stainless props are awesome for performance boats or um, if you know you're in deep water. Sure. Um, the, the, they do more with the blades. They rake them more and they get more pitch and stuff out of them. So you get more speed. Um, but when you hit, instead of chewing up just the prop, you bend prop shafts. Everything. Not saying you can't do that with aluminum, but usually with stainless, something's got to give. With, a, with aluminum prop, the prop gives. With a stainless prop, the prop gives and shafts give. Okay, now let's just real quick talk about uh, outdrives. I know uh, as we get into some more shows here, we're going to go through, you know, how, how, you know, to fix an outdrive and things like that. Uh, what are some of the main symptoms of problems with an outdrive that, you know, and, and really I'm, I know there's boaters that know exactly what I'm talking about, but there are a lot of guys that work at UPS that are 23 years old that just went out and bought their first Wellcraft Nova XL and they take it out to Anchor Point and they go the wrong side and I don't even think that channel setup's there anymore now and a brand spanking new boat I ripped an outdrive off it the first night I had my boat and uh, I, I mean what are some things that people should be looking at if they think they might be having a little problem with it? With an outdrive? 
You mean signs of? Signs of, Well, yeah. you've got oil leakage, um, um, corrosion's a big thing with drives. Uh, make sure you change your sacrificial anodes. Um, you got water pumps in the dry on, on some drives um, that need to be changed periodically. Um, when you put it in gear, if you turn the wheel one way or another, you can hear a thumping noise. That's usually U-joints. Okay. Um, any kind of funky noise when you shift it, um, if it's not shifting in the forward and reverse smoothly, then you've got cable issues or gear issues. And this is stuff, you know, all this can be taken care of here at Brunner. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and we're, we're not trying to scare anybody. We're just trying to make sure everybody knows what things are going into when we're taping this right now. It's going into, oh, uh, we got the July 4th weekend coming up here in the next two weeks. And uh, I, I know next week we were supposed to have the Coast Guard on with us this week. And uh, we're, we're moving that to next week. But they've got a, uh, uh, they're going to be a Maumee River Yacht Club and then at the Sailing Club. I believe so, yeah. Yes, on Saturday and Sunday uh, during the uh, afternoon to have your boat inspected uh, so you make sure you have all the right stuff on there. We want to make sure you get all of that done. And uh, Tim, one thing we're going to uh, talk about here too is uh, how to properly tie a boat down. You know, the weather's been so crazy and now we get this heavy winds and 60 mile an hour winds. And a lot of people don't realize how to tie their boat down. And uh, when we come back, we're going we're gonna to show you how to do that. See how easy that was? Yeah, but I'm still going to be five minutes short. Now i got to figure out something to... There is only one place where you'll find scenic golf at affordable prices. Fallen Timbers Fairways. This golf course offers some of the best golf in Northwest Ohio for any skill level. At Fallen Timbers, they can help you plan for your next outing or event, or even improve your skills with their talented golf instructors. With their exceptional rates, Fallen Timbers is your first choice for great golf. FallenTimbersFairways.com. Easy to find, fun to play, right off Route 24 in Waterville. FallenTimbersFairways.com. Fallen Timbers Fairways. A rewarding career begins with an apprenticeship in the piping industry. Our state-of-the-art training facility, combined with on-the-job training side-by-side -side with a journeyman, delivers the experience needed to become a professional plumber, steam fitter, or HVAC service mechanic. Avoid costly tuitions and student loans. Earn a competitive wage and college credit in an exciting trade. We are the Northwest Ohio piping industry, building the future through dedication, knowledge, and expertise. Think fast. Think FedEx. Join the FedEx Ground team in Perrysburg, Ohio. FedEx Ground is now hiring package handlers. Earn up to $11.20 per hour to start with rapid pay increases. Must be 18 years or older. Visit watchassort.com to register for a sort observation or call 1-800-582-3577. That's 1-800-582-3577. FedEx Ground is an equal opportunity affirmative action employer committed to a diverse workforce. One of my biggest pet thieves with customers is how they tie up their boats. Um, there's a correct way and a, a wrong way. Um, the one thing is you, you really got to use the correct lines. Um, I've seen people tie up with uh, clothes line, with plastic line. Um, the, the two main lines probably used around here for the boats of our size are 3 8 inch and half inch. Um, what I got here is, is half inch line, which is plenty, plenty strong enough for boats this size. Um, so the one thing is, and usually they're all pre-made up with the loop on the end, so you can... Loop it around. They're all, all pre-made up. Um, Best way to do it is just, just like that, right in the cleat. Um, all boats are, they're all kind of set up different from where their cleats are located, spring cleats, bow cleats, stern cleats. Um, so just, just general, general information. Um, you've got the different cleats, different heights of boats, different docks. Now here at, here at Brenner, we've got awesome floating docks. So um, you can tie up a boat pretty tight to a dock, and as the water goes up and down, 
the, the boat moves with it. Um, but I, I like to tie up with four lines. We've got the post over here, so it keeps it from hitting the dock over here. This keeps it from hitting it over here, the front from staying here. Uh, on a, a dock that doesn't have a post over here, so you have to die it like in three points. Usually a spring line is usable, so it doesn't go back and forth and, and rub. Um, and if you don't have, if you can't tie up four, four ways, um, obviously use boat fenders like the gentleman next to me. Um, he's, using, he's using a spring line, a bow, a stern, and I don't, I don't think, I can't see, but I, he's obviously not tying it up over here. So he's, he's, using a, he's using a fender here to keep the boat off the dock where I'm not using a fender. Um, which way is the best? It, it's, it's your preference. Um, I, I, I personally only use the fenders if I'm tying up next to somebody or on a, like down at the restaurants where, where the boat's hitting, hitting the dock. Um, it's just less, less hassle when I go to leave. I untie, back out and go. I don't have to worry about the fenders dangling and, and, and flopping all over. Now on docks that, that aren't floating like ours, the, um, it's a whole different ball game. You can't tie up like this because of the water fluctuations. The wind blows, the water goes up, the wind blows the other way, the water goes down. So you have to use a, like a cross tying method where you would take this line and tie it there and that line and tie it there. So it's like a crisscross so when the, you have more lines so when the boat goes up and down you have more, more play in the lines. Here again we've got the lines going this way. It's keeping me off the dock. If, if this was a stationary dock I would I would cross, cross the front lines again to give, the more line you can have out on a, on a stationary dock, the better, because water can come up three, four, five foot, and you've got that much more line. If you were tied tight, when the water goes down, um, you either have two options. You try to untie it, which sometimes is impossible, or you cut the line because there's so much tension on it, you're either you're gonna rip a dock pole out or rip a cleat out of your boat. So the, obviously the, the floating docks are, are the way to be, but not everybody has floating docks and, and uh, so you've got to tie up appropriately. When you, you know, get to your boat and you decide that you're, you know, you're gonna take her out for a ride, for a cruise, um, obviously it's always good to, to, to check your fluids, um, check your oils, transmissions, you know, look at your belts, make sure you know, nothing's Nothing's out of the ordinary. Nothing looks funky. Um, never hurts to take a little sniff um, in the bilge. Make sure you don't have a gas smell. Uh, when all that's kind of checked over and ready to go, um, turn your blower switch on for about five minutes. Um, even though you didn't smell it, there could be fumes down deep. Um, start her up. Um, let's sit at the dock, let her get idle, let her, you know, come up to temperature, make sure you're not overheating. Uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on an inboard boat, you can, you can look at the exhaust, make sure it's pumping water. On a stern drive, it's, it's harder to tell, so you almost have to watch your gauges. Um, once you know you're not overheating, you can bring it down, the chokes are open, um, you bring it down on idle, um, you're pretty much then, you know, ready to, ready to hit the road, you know, get the, get the people, if you have uh, friends on board. Uh, I, I kind of like to get, give everybody a little job, you know, bow line, stern line, um, and uh, kind of give them a quick once over and untie and off you go. Do you ever drive around the neighborhoods just to look at the houses? I like spotting the ones that have been around the longest because they remind me of the amazing legacy I'm part of. Hi, I'm Marty Sutter, president of Genoa Bank. For over 110 years, our bank has helped families buy and build their homes. And all that time, one thing hasn't changed. At Genoa Bank, we believe that when we put the mortgage needs first, 
the rest takes care of itself. Genoa Bank, taking your banking needs personally. sound system from TAS Electronics, you've just got to move. TAS Electronics, it's hot. enjoyed the show. Got Captain Tony. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? I'm going to put you to work next week. I'm ready. You know, I'm, I'm hoping to maybe buy this boat we're sitting behind us here. Maybe that's a nice boat, huh? Yes, it is. You like that? I do. And Captain Tony is the man when it comes to boat inspections. Well, thank you, sir. Hey, what's your phone number? 419-350-9777. I didn't want it for the show. I wanted it personally. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, now you have it. <laughs> Tony's going to take us through a boat inspection and the things, uh, if you want to buy a boat, if you're itching, if you're thinking about it, we're going to get you set up here. And uh, of course, Tim Sells is the man. You walk into Brenner here at Harrison's and he's sitting in this big, big, big captain's chair <laughs> and, uh, and uh, pictures of the, the SS Minnow all <laughs> over his office and all kinds of good stuff like that. My shirt's even coming out, so things are good here. <laughs> Getting ready to take the shirt off and enjoy some great weather. Tony, I know you got a lot to go. Okay, thank you. I'm nice so you. excited to okay. work with you next week. And, Tim, you know what? We learned a lot today. Good. That's what it's all about. As this show progressive, progresses, we're going to have a lot more fun. We're going to start going places. And we got some people we're going to be introducing as we put... We're actually going to put the frog on this show. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows the frog, but you will. You will. We'll see you next week. And, uh, Tony, get ready. I'm going to put you to work, buddy. Okay, we'll see you. All right. Thanks for watching. Lake Erie, Port-A-Call.